Hello, everyone. Welcome. Sorry, I apologize for the late start. Um, we had a few extra technical difficulties going on. This is a participatory performance. Um, we're all signed into Zoom. I have a six-year-old with something loud playing in the background, so I think he's going to be coming through here on the patio. Um, so I want to welcome you. So this is the first particip participatory performance for Home at Acogelor. Um, this is Calm and Chaos Coexist and Collide with artist Andrea Nusch. Um, and I'm really excited about this. We've got, I know, mi amor, tiene que esperar. Okay, hang on, guys. I got to go open the door. Um, so let's see. So Common Chaos Coexist and Collide with artist Andrea Nusch. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six artists that will be joining Andrea. Elise Coleman, George Lewis, Regina Gestro, Cello Montoya, Bard, and Elizabeth Emery. Um, before we get started, I just want to um, use this platform to remind everybody who is in the States and can vote to vote. And if either you're not in the States or unable to vote, please make sure that the people you know who are able to vote, that they get out there and vote. And I also want to take a moment to, um, to thank and honor Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg because we wouldn't be doing this right now if it weren't for her. And I wouldn't be able to have a cogelor if it weren't for the hard work that, that she did. I'm gonna hand this over to Andrea and, um, and then we'll get the performance started. Hello um, everyone, thank you for being here today and joining us for this participatory sewing machine slash create creativity inspiration session. Uh, we're not limited to just sewing machines, but this is the medium I'm using and uh, we're going to have other um, practices uh, during our performance. I would like to thank um, all the participants that are here today from uh, across the country. And um, I am a multi, um, mixed media artist based in Los Angeles and I've been working with packaging materials for quite a while. It is something that fascinates me. I, um, I find them incredibly uh, sexy, useful, and um, that they can create a beautiful shapes if they are put together and not just discarded as we usually do. Um, during COVID, I turned my practice inward. I moved from my studio back into my house, my garage, and I got a sewing machine, which was something I always um, flirted with. And um, I felt it was the right time to learn and to start um, introducing this to my practice. So today what we're going to do is um, a shared experience of my creative process during COVID. I have put together um, audio that will be playing in the background that has mostly quiet sounds, which is the calm, and then there is some chaos in between and some chaos coexisting. It does get um, a little political because these are the things that are around me and the things that I uh, am hearing. So these are the voices in my head. It's not meant to take a side, it's just to share what I'm going through and what I think about sometimes when I'm working. So um, hopefully nobody will be offended by what's in there. And without further ado, I would like to start. Um, the audio has a couple of sections. You're gonna notice in the beginning, it's uh, very soothing. So we're gonna do a grounding moment for all the artists that are here. Uh, people can start working if they would like, but it's, you know, there is a bell in a couple of minutes, which is the official start, but um, this is for everyone. So let's do it.
Thank <laughs> you.
has anything to do with a virus whatsoever. So that's the way it is. Don't get in the way. Don't get in trouble. I'm not going to vote for Are you talking about climate change and Green New Deal? The Green New Deal is a jobs and justice center plan to decarbonize the U.S. economy within 10 years. Everybody wants to their pocketbook. They do.
Biden is basically the Loch Ness Monster of the swamp. For the past half century, he's been lurking around in there. He sticks his head up every now and then to run for president. Then he disappears and doesn't do much in between. Their vision for America is socialism, and we know that socialism has failed everywhere. They want to tell Americans how to live. Where many Americans increasingly have an uneasiness about the ability of their families to live safely in these troubling times. America is such a great country that not only do you have the right to own a gun and use it to defend yourself, but thousands of Americans will offer you free advice on how to use it. Hating each other, fighting each other, killing each other, killing each other at home. Keep dangerous people out of our country. The words and leadership of Martin Luther King Jr. inspired me to find a way to get in the way. Got in trouble. Good trouble. Necessary trouble. Every human being is of infinite worth, deserving of compassion, dignity, and respect. In much of the Democratic Party, it's now fashionable to say that America is racist. It's a lie. America is not a racist country. And for those who say that law and order is a culture of racism, top secret there is here is a reply. Deep insight I as far as socio-economic theory is concerned. Some of my friends didn't make it. They died. On monuments and for our great nation instead. We will learn from our past. showing up with snowballs to prove that climate change isn't real. Democracy, then economically, or economically, I prefer more some type of socialism, social democracy. Uh, I feel so kind of proud big time. Raise us. Be proud, strong, to know and be proud of our Indian heritage. She taught us to put family first, the family you're born into, and the family Sovereign 
A lot of people don't want to wear masks. There are a lot of people think the masks are not good. Well, no, but it's not. Safety is not, is not as important as our freedom and liberty. Yeah. And how is it that I know? Well, I know because I am thinking of myself just a little bit. Many of you watch for me and manipulate you to
had any talent in the world, any talent that God could give me, I would be a great diva. <laughs> Okay, we're at the end of the performance. start to bring the work to a close. And those of you who have multiple views, if you want to choose just one. And when you're ready, put the camera on. Back to you. So we can come together for a conversation and discussion about the experience. Um, and I invite anybody on Facebook, if they have any questions, to put them in the comments. For me as a spectator, it was really beautiful to watch and listen to. I want to thank Andrea for her project for initiating this and then each one of you artists for participating and for the Facebook Live audience for tuning in.
I was wondering if anybody, um, if, it's okay, if it's okay with you, Andre, if anybody wants to talk about how that experience was. Okay, I'll start since the baby's quiet now. <laughs> so I'm Chella Montoya. I was just um, so honored to be a part of this. I, I haven't painted in a while and it reminded me like very last minute I was going to sew, um, but it reminded me that I paint and I should do that a little bit more often, a little more often to, um, to calm and, and uh, to create make creativity in my home again. So uh, my daughter joined me midway and this is so much fun and joy. Thank you. I think your daughter's noises is my favorite part. Mm -hmm. yeah, I really appreciated the um, use of calm and chaos. I thought that was really interesting and nice balance. Um, the calm kind of getting creativity flowing and then some of the clips Andrea, were really interesting just thinking about how maybe our work relates to what's going on in the world um just kind of those things were going on in my mind so that was a nice contrast to work with yeah i found it um i found it super calming um, and really interesting to be responsive both to sort of internal impulses, but also the external stimulus of the sounds that everybody was making in addition to the recordings. That was a really interesting um, sound space. Uh, I think I've been inspired to actually get a sewing machine again. When I saw how uh, how badly I was losing the arms race, I actually went back to the sewing machine during the quarantine. I started making masks, and then just kind of kept with it. And just uh, I've always sewn, but I haven't sewn a lot last year. This year, I just kind of been just sewing, just sewing. So it's been great. I think another thing that was interesting for me um, in trying to set things up so that the surface I was working on was visible to the camera, I actually couldn't see it super well. So I really was um, using all those sort of auditory cues as, as the way to sort of work on it, as opposed to visual feedback. I mean, I could see it, but it, it was not as, not as well as I often can when I'm drawing. So I thought that was also a, a fun challenge. It was like we all collectively made it or something. The sound was really beautiful and I started to notice the sound of my sewing machine also. So that was really fun just to have that, you know, at least from my room be part of what you had created as well. That's great. That's really powerful. Thank you. So you enjoyed created collectively, creating collectively on Zoom. So I think we do a lot of Zoom calls, but I don't know if people have been creating together. For me, it was just, I was forced to do something that I've been putting off for a really long time. And so it was, uh, yeah, I couldn't escape. So I think that was really great. And, and, you know, because I was here, I mean, it's like, all the advice, just show up at your studio. And so, so that's sort of what it felt like, you know, just show up at the sewing machine and do that thing that you've been wanting to do for a long time, but have been avoiding. So there was a beauty of the group forcing me to do that. Thank you. Thank you for showing up. Yeah. I mean, for me, the sewing machine, I think represents a lot of the simplicity. I think I spoke in the beginning of life that we have forgotten. Um, we buy everything ready. 
we, you know, we started doing our, like Regina said, our own masks. I was terrible at doing masks, so <laughs> I'm bad for art. But um, uh, I feel very connected to the medium and reminds me of childhood, reminds me of home, being a younger home, um, resourcefulness. You know, sometimes where I come from, we couldn't, there was no Target, there was no Walmart. You know, sometimes you had to go sew your clothes, have somebody sew your clothes for you. So I think it's a very, um, it's very nice to be back to that. You know, I always say I want to be back in the 80s sometimes. <laughs> um, so this work has been very powerful. And I think um, George mentioned, um, you don't get to see very much, right? You're working and it's your unconscious and you're channeling. And, um, and I don't, you know, I would love to see your work if you would like to show, but like, I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I had a concept of the medium. So I started, these are materials from the failed masks. Um, and I am a packaging hoarder. I have lots of stuff. And I like experimenting with different stitches um, as if they were lines. You know, instead of drawing, I use the machine to me as my pencil. Um, so this is kind of, maybe will become part of something else. And this is kind of what I did for a corredor. Um, a concept of just letting the machine go, you know, with the sounds or my thoughts. And sometimes the other side is even better. But I think I like, you know, the main side. So, so if you'd like to share your work, it would be great. And if you can talk about it more, how you felt, and if this relates to your practice, or if you, if you did something different because you're in group. I can talk. I'm oh, sorry. Let me interrupt for one second. Um, I just want to read one of the comments from Facebook of somebody who participated. Um, not in the Zoom call, uh, Joanna Berghoff said, thank you for providing a space and time to create. I was personally in the middle of making a grocery list, laundry, work, and when the performance brought, and with the performance brought out my sketchbook to make time to draw. And then she loves the concept of calm and chaos because art making has the power to create calm amidst chaos. So I just wanted to, and as another participant who's not visually present, thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Joanna. I'm going to take Luna's cue because she's um, showing her artwork that she created. Um, Luna works in more abstract. Um, she paints every Friday at daycare and she's a great painter. Um, I've been painting forever. Um, I start off as a painter. Um, I've been painting these my days for maybe over a decade, especially like in underground, but they are um, in reference to water and my practice around water. Um, my gaze are um, succulent plants that are very resilient. Mama, hey. And that's Luna's paint. And um, they take on brilliant colors in the most harsh times. So my studio is filled with um, my gaze that I've done for the past decade and they've taken on different shapes and different backgrounds. And these are the starts of um, of different backgrounds and um, just really gestural and energy and color and life and you know that's uh, what I do as my kind of meditation on art and painting. Um, yeah. I can show mine. I was kind of um, really feeling the um, the sounds of the sewing machine, just kind of um, kind of constant and wave like. So I was kind of just um, going along with that, taking some, and I I I have sewn in some of my artwork. Um, I do a lot of mixed media, so a lot of different um, things I take to put in, but. I feel like I go to the hot glue gun a lot just for time's sake. So this was nice to go back to just sewing. And um, um, yeah, I was just kind of feeling the energy we were making and just kind of going constantly around with what I was just 
experimenting. <laughs> I guess my experience was kind of similar. Um, usually my work is more illustrative, but I was trying to just react to what I was hearing. Um, and um, it was very liberating to um, not have an objective, I guess, or have a, yeah, a planned objective to like compare myself to. Um, so yeah, it was a liberating experience. Thank you. Anyone else? I could show you mine. Um, I've been working on the series of Americana quilt pieces, and this is a log cabin block. Um, and pretty much you start sewing in the middle and you go around and around and around. And uh, the other one was kind of falling apart as I was working on it, but that one is that one came out pretty good. If you're trying to see the back, the back's also, I use like a matching thread so it doesn't, but the texture is really fantastic. Yeah, I love the back. I always like the back. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, these are, uh, these are what I've been working on since, um, I guess since I sort of finished making masks and the mask demand kind of dropped and I started quilting these again. So. And doing it all together in a group is different because I usually like sew a bunch and then get up and walk away and then sit down again and sew and then get up and walk away and like this has kind of forced me just to kind of stay focused and just finish it instead of instead of like running around the house or dealing with an animal or something. So. I normally do mixed media collage and I've been wanting, so the thing that I've been wanting to do and haven't been doing is uh, incorporating my interest in fabric. And so this is, um, this is what I'm doing. It's a printed, silkscreen printed canvas and other stuff on top. And I just looked at the back and I like the back too. <laughs> but I like using different stitches. I like, I like what you were saying, Andrea, about using different stitches as drawing. I think that's really fun. Really wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I think this has been incredible and uh, I really feel uh, blessed and grateful for your presence and for sharing this space with you. And um, I hope we can collaborate another time again. And thanks Acogedor for the space and for trusting my concept. And um, I guess I'll pass it on to Nick now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Again, thank you for bringing this beautiful project to Acogedor. Um, and then I want to make a point to thank Regina and Elizabeth, Elise, George, um, Cello, and Barbara again for your participation, for um, being here creatively and sharing the space with us. Um, before we finish, I want to again use this opportunity to say vote. If you can, do it. If you can't, tell people who you know who can vote in the States to do it um, or any other country you may reside in as well. Um, again, a thankful um, and honor and thankful note for the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, for allowing us to have space. And to let you know what else is going on with Acogedor, so uh, this week we switched the highlight to the in-between um, theme. And tomorrow night at 6.30 Pacific time, you'll see Andrea's face again, and she'll be joined with Brandon Barr and Caroline Yu, and they'll be discussing their work um, in relation to the in-between, in relation to home, and in relation to this strange and bizarre time we are in. Um, right now, we have the last day of Luciana Veit's uh, Instagram takeover on acogedor.space on Instagram. Tomorrow, we'll start Javier Cáceres Cortez. 
Um, and he's got, he's got a lot of fun stuff coming up too. Um, and Luciana has been really, it's been very intimate. Um, the looks and sharings that she's, that she's had for her Instagram takeover, she's been giving us backgrounds of, of her work and her process and um, really sharing a lot of herself. Um, and I think that is it. I will release you all to the rest of your Sunday. So say bye, Facebook. <laughs>